William Shakespeare wrote, what's in a name? That which we call a rose by any other name would smell as sweet. Maybe he wrote these as the words of a naive teenager for a reason, because names, as all the research will tell you, matter, especially if your name is terrible. Today, on our show, awful names get deep, fat, fried. Some people think our show has an awful name. I remember that was like one of the main criticisms when we first started. True. Like they wanted some kind of deep. <laughs> See, like when I created, when we created Drunken Peasants or I created Drunken Peasants and I chose that name, put that out there in the world, you know, every, there was no expectation for it. So no one cared that it was just some random gibberish from my head. But then I did it again and people were like, no, terrible name. You didn't like, name Deep Fat Fried Fucker. I did. No, you didn't. I came up with. I came up with Southern Fried Podcast, right. and then you guys are like, I don't like, you You were like, I don't want Southern in it. Uh-huh. And, and then, then I, I was said, like, I don't know. And, we and, then some I names said, and then I said what? Deep Fat Fried. And you were like, that's it. That's the one. Yeah. Dude, uh, I toss it around. I hate to call I'm it trying bullshit. to fucking remythologize this shit, bitch. I ain't letting you do that. I know I'm what pretty- happened. I know what happened, dude. Mo- we were all sitting there, then Monkey showed up, and he said, I have good name. I'm like, what's name? He's like, Deep Fat Fry. You get, I give you name. You say Southern Fry Podcast. I give you better name. And then he left. And then we had the name. So, speaking of names, which I'll is fight you is over about. this name. I'll fight you over this name, fight TJ. Mm hmm. Whatever. I came up with it. It's fine. <laughs> You're good. Whatever. You know, you know, whatever. You know what? Monkey if you like the name. It. Anybody out there, if you like the name, I came up with it. If you hate the name, it was Paul. Got it. So there you go. (laughs) But is this true? Well, they actually did a study called the A Rose by Any Other Name, Would It Smell as Sweet study. Uh Uh, Uh-huh. Helena Jadavogic and colleagues at uh, McGill University and the Montreal Neurological Institute examined whether presenting an odor with a positive, neutral, or negative name would influence how people perceive it. They took 15 odors ranging from unpleasant to neutral to pleasant and presented them to a subject with names that were positive, carrot juice, uh, neutral, a two-digit number, and negative, such as moldy vegetables. Regardless of the odor, unpleasant, neutral, or pleasant, it was rated more pleasant when presented with a positive name and less uh, pleasant when presented with a negative name. Uh, I'm going to have to decide on a pronunciation of this. Jordovic didn't only depend on uh, the word of the subjects. Measures such as skin uh, conductance and heart rate showed arousal when an odor was presented with a positive name, and sniff volumes went up too. A positive name left them sniffing for more. So, rose by another name really might not smell as sweet. I mean, isn't that kind of dependent on the context, though? Because, like, if if a rose was always called a turd, right, right, then a rose would still smell sweet. And like, if a rose, if a turd was always called a rose, ah, the sweet smell of turds, ah, the disgusting smell of roses. Yeah, exactly. Fair. 
Fair enough. But if you change the name of the ro uh, the, a rose to the turd blossom, like tomorrow, you know, and that just stuck for well, some yeah. reason, eventually people Cause might. Because people are uh, already predisposed to have a negative fucking connotation attached to things like turd. Right. So of course. But the point is, I guess the, the broader point here is, though, is that the name something is given had more to do with how people perceived it than what that thing actually was in a vacuum. Not in a vacuum, though. No, no, no. It's not in a goddamn vacuum because they use disparaging words that people already had a negative connotation towards. Right. And, and shocker, shocker, people made more negative associations. That's not even a well, study. I'm well, I'm saying, it's in a I'm saying in a vacuum in terms of like the, 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 the ones name. that were... The one, well, the ones that were like just labeled with numbers, like they were just neutral. The only way like, you could do this in a vacuum is to take somebody that's never spoken mm -hmm. and teach them a language, but just replace a word with another word. Oh, yeah. Turd for rose. Well, look, you had a famous argument with uh, Ben over this shit back in the DP days where. Did I? You're like, <laughs> whack. 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 That sounds gross. Oh yeah, that's you, right. You, you didn't have any. You didn't have any preconceived notion of the word "weck." Yeah, but you but just it sounds like a lot like "dreck" like, and "wet." You know what yeah, I mean? That's true. Wet dreck. Yeah. Weck. But knowing nothing about it, the I name didn't affect you. I don't see how that's a. I don't see how that's a problem. <laughs> uh, anyway, so here's some other. Here's some ways that your name can affect your success. So if you have an if you have a name that's easy to pronounce, people will favor you more. I know I will, because I don't like, I don't like, I mean, we, we do this show all the time. I come across so many names. Just in the last story, it was like, Globovich, Globovich. That sucked. Wish your name was Sally, <laughs> you know? Uh, so New York University study researchers found that people with easier pronounced names often have higher status positions at work. One of the psychologists, Adam Alter, very easy name, by the way, explains to Wired when we can process a piece of information more easily when it's easier to comprehend, we come to like it more. Makes In her further study, Alter also found that companies with simpler names and ticker symbols tended to perform better in the stock market. Uh, if your name is common, you're more likely to be hired. So if you have a nice common name like Paul, you get hired on. Have a more uncommon name like uh, Zandalar Cryptodeucius or something. Maybe you, you get, hired get hired for a minute, yeah. but then eventually people get sick. Yeah, get that fuck out of here, Zandalar. I don't even like saying that fucker's name. Get him out of here. Um, uncommon names are associated with juvenile delinquency. Mm, a 2009 quiet. study at Shippensburg University suggested there's a strong relationship between the popularity of one's first name and juvenile criminal behavior. Researchers found that regardless of race, young people with unpopular names were more likely to engage in criminal activity. The findings obviously don't show that unusual names cause this behavior, but merely show a link between the two things. There is actually a, a study. I don't think it's, I don't think I pulled it in any of these, but um, they had a study where they, they uh, looked at how teachers graded papers from students with different names. And they would give students with names like, you know, David and Amanda, much higher marks than students with like Boris, Olga, you know? <laughs> They're just like, no, no, no. Yeah, Boris, he's an idiot. Same paper though. Um, if you have a white sounding name, you're more likely to get hired. Uh, in one study cited by the Atlantic, white sounding names like Emily Walsh and Greg Baker got nearly 50% more callbacks than candidates with black sounding names like Lakeisha Washington and Jamal Jones. Researchers determined that having a white sounding name is worth as much as eight years of work experience. <laughs> Look, do you have eight Damn. years experience or are you white? <laughs> it will take either one. Got that, got um, that white work experience, you know what I mean? If your last name is closer to the beginning of the alphabet, you could get into a better school. For a study wow. published in the Economics of Education Review, researchers study the relationship between the positions in the alphabet of more than 90,000 Czech students' last names and their admission chances at competitive schools. They found that even though students with last names were low in the alphabet tended to get higher test scores overall, among the students who applied to universities and were on the margins of getting admitted or not, those with last names that were close to the top of the alphabet were more likely to be admitted. 
Well, you know why that is. They're starting with the A's. Yeah, they're just going through it. And by the time they get to the fucking lower ones, they're like, oh, Jesus, enough of this. Right, Q? Who even has a Q last name? Fuck this shit. <laughs> We're done. If your last name is close to the end of the alphabet, you're more likely to be an impulse spender. According to one study, people with last names such as Yardley or Zabar may be more susceptible to promotional strategies like limited time offers. The authors speculate that spending your childhood at the end of the roll call may make you want to jump on offers before you miss the chance. What about me? I'm right in the Elemento zone. Elemento. You know let me ask I mean? you guys this. Uh, do either of you... What, so, Scotty, what's your favorite letter? Do you have a favorite letter? Hmm. I'll say X. What? Letter? Yeah. You have a favorite letter, Paul? The letter X is mine. This guy likes X. I mean, I always get fucking torn between F and U, TJ. <laughs> well, uh, if you chose U, you would be uh you'd be you'd be going along with a trend because most people when they're asked what their favorite letter is, they choose a letter that's in their own name. Ah. My favorite letter happens to be T, by the way. Um oh, sure. Shocking, I know. Yeah. Using your middle initial makes people think you're smarter and more competent. My, so if my, you go around, my favorite letter happens to be T. My favorite name happens to be TJ. My favorite person happens to be me. My favorite <laughs> thing that was ever said was said by me. The favorite uh, <laughs> thing that I've ever yeah. eaten was cooked by me. Yeah. Uh, shock. I think that's all true. Um, <laughs> using your middle initial <laughs> makes people. So, so Scotty, you, you, uh, Scott A. Kirk, right? Paul Scott. E. Parkey. Yours doesn't work because That's it sounds uh, like Polly. It sounds too friendly to sound. Polly Parkey. Yeah. Paul Polly e. Parkey. Parkey. I'd be like Thomas J. Cook. And I got that third I could tack on there, too. Oh, the third. That makes it even better, dude. Like, oh, yes, a refined gentleman. <laughs> um, you are more likely to work at a company that matches your initials. Since we identify with our names, we prefer things that are similar to them. In a Gent University study, researchers found that people are more likely to work at companies matching their own initials. For example, Brian Ingbong might work for Business Insider. The rarer the initials, the more likely people were to work for companies with names similar to their own. There's a similar phenomenon where people actually gravitate towards careers and professions that sound like their name. Like there's a disproportionate amount of dentists named Dennis. Um, Why? That don't that doesn't make any sense. It's true. People just uh, like alliteration that much. I'm I'm Dennis I, the dentist. Yeah. Well, I think they just they just like it feels like oh this is this is like me. It sounds like me. <laughs> See, I, I, I think that I'm, I'm no more egotistical than most people. I think I just wear it on my sleeve more. If your name sounds noble, you are more likely to work in a high-ranking position. In a European study, researchers studied German names and ranks within companies. Those with last names such as Kaiser or Koenig, which means king, were in more managerial positions than those with last names that referred to common occupations such as Koch, which means cook. Bauer, which means farmer. Ugh. Disgusting. Revolted. Uh, these can be the result of associative reasoning, a psychological theory describing a type of thinking in which people automatically link emotions and previous knowledge with similar words and phrases. If you are a boy with a girl's name, you could be more likely to be suspended from school. Uh, in a 2005 study, University of Florida economics professor David Figlio studied a large Florida school district from 1996 to, uh, to 2000 and found that boys with names uh, most commonly given to girls misbehaved more in middle school and were more likely to disrupt their peers. He also found their behavior problems were linked with increased disciplinary problems and lower test scores. Dude, so the boy names theory the proven wrong, yeah. right? Yeah. Um, if you're a woman with a gender neutral name, you're more likely to be successful in certain fields. These um, are all men. like all of these are not disproving the bard's wisdom and truth because they are so you, all you gotta bringing, like, you gotta like, oh, the Shakespeare thing. No, I can't. <laughs> like, Cause he's that was right. just an intro to get into this. No, um, no, no. The intro to get into this is just the truth about it. There's nothing in a name that isn't a preconceived notion. 
The reason that people okay. with last names that translate into king rise up and people with last names well, that translate yeah, into I mean, farmer obviously. don't is because No one's I'm not I'm not saying there's some like kind of magical intonation in like the syllables themselves, but names do mean something to people. As I mean, like your name can obviously impact your life in a number of very dramatic ways. Well, I, I mean, have, the play turds are blooming, into TJ. a pile of dead Capulets and Montagues because uh, names did mean something to them. The uh, turds, men with the shorter, turds are blooming, TJ. The turds are blooming. Stop and smell they the smell turds. Like shit. They smell like shit, Paul. <laughs> men with shorter first names are overrepresented in the C-suite, as in getting to the top of the CEO hierarchy shit. Uh, women at the top are more likely to use their their full names, uh, which is I don't know. That's probably just to sound more important. I mean, what does um, that mean? Oh, like like isn't that everybody? Like most people, yeah. like when they get, yes. put, I'm Paul Everett Parkey Jr. Mm, yes, fine, fine name. So there are some names that are going away. These are 36 once popular baby names that are rapidly disappearing. This is in 2017, so maybe some of them are just gone now. These are the names you can just say goodbye to. Angela. Angela, gone. Bertram, I have never even met a Bertram. Definitely gone. Beverly. Uh, so this fucking idea that there's going to be a Beverly Crusher in the 24th century, bullshit. Well, maybe it'll come back, though. Like, maybe these maybe. names will get hot again. That could happen. Cecil, gone. Clarence, gone. Clive. I think Clive should stick around just for Clive Barker's sake. I do like Clive. Cyril. Cyril. Deborah, Diane, Donna, Dean, Doris, Dennis, Derek, Duncan, Elaine, Ernest, jo uh, I, think, I don't know if every fucking spelling of Jeffrey, is this pronounced Joffrey or Jeffrey? But that's, that spelling's out anyway. Horace, I knew a dude named Horace. Joanne, yeah. Leonard. Leonard's a cool name. There's a lot of cool Leonards. Uh, Leonard Nimoy, Leonard Cohen, come on. Leonard Can't let Leonard Skinner. go out of style. Yeah. Uh, Maureen Malcolm, which was almost Scotty's name, by the way. Fuck, dude. Yeah, your almost name is fucking out, Scotty. It's dude, out. you were almost named Dang. Malcolm? Yeah, Scotty was yes. almost named Malcolm. Dude, that would have been dope. Nigel, Neville, Paula, Roy, Sally, Sandra, or Sandra, Sharon, Sheila, Tracy, Wendy, Yvonne, and Wayne. This reads like my fucking graduating class list, dude. Yeah. And they're all out. <laughs> they're all gone. All gone. Get out of mean. here. What are they being replaced no, by? I don't know. Who cares? Like, what are the most popular names right now? Um, I can look it up if you want. I didn't pull it because oh, I was okay. I wanted to focus more on terrible names. And so Got those it. names are so terrible they're getting we're getting rid of them. But I also I also like stripper names. I like that strippers have uh, have names that uh, you know kind of connote stripperiness. Sure. So here's just like a random sampling. I'm obviously not going to sit here and read through all this fucking shit. We could just read like a few randoms here. Uh, Delilah. That's a good stripper name. I actually knew a Delilah though in real life. Oh yeah. Yeah. Did she strip? N no. Hey, Scotty, good news. Fawn's on here. Wonderful. <laughs> you think Fawn ever uh, worked the pole? Ever, yeah. Uh, I think the pole would have been fucking broken in two. <laughs> <laughs> she bent the pole. Yeah. Uh, Epiphany's on here, you know? Electra, that's a cool one. Uh, Epiphany is kind of a sad stripper name, isn't it? Because, yeah, like, aren't it? you kind of, like, <laughs> hoping they have one and find something else to do? Well... When you get to the age of 40 or something, you change your name to Irony, I guess. <laughs> uh, Lola, of course. Very sexualized name. Luna. Lyric. That's definitely a stripper name. Uh, yes. Piper. Uh, Rhapsody. A lot of the E's. Misty. Phoenix. Ooh, it's Phoenix. Come She's on, the it's Phoenix. Guy. Stormy, yeah, like Stormy Daniels yeah. famously fucked the president or the former president. Maybe maybe she fucked the current president too. I don't know. Um, let's see what the last one is. Zion. That'd be a that's a weird stripper name, I gotta be honest with dude, you. Dude, but yeah, dude. I, if I was sitting in a club though, and the guy was like, and put your hands together and get your cocks ready for Zion, I'd be like, fuck. I'm paying. Yeah, if you were like walking out when that's happening. 
you might be walking out of the street, like, Zion. You'd be like, you know what? I'm gonna stay for a while. <laughs> Let's see what Zion to- like. <laughs> Zion. That's a good stripper name right there. It is. It is really. It sound. It has. It has weight to it. It does. Uh, of course, famous for. Uh, well, they're famous in general because they're celebrities, but also famous for fucking having really weird names for their kids. Celebrities. So uh, let's take a look at some of those. Sylvester Apollo Bear. Great. Great name. I mean, yeah. do they want him to grow up to be an idiot cartoon character? Like, what is going on here? <laughs> I love Elon Musk and Grimes's name for their kid. I don't even know how you're supposed to pronounce it. Am I just supposed to say X-A-E-A-12? I don't think so. I don't think that's what it's no. supposed to be. Like, how is that supposed to be pronounced? I don't know how to pronounce that. Ask Elon. I don't fucking know. Radix. Yeah. Gravity. Hmm. I don't know who most of these so-called. I know Cameron Diaz. I don't know who most of these celebrities are, by the way. Man, I but. hope that gravity doesn't grow up to be huge. Like, what if gravity grows up to oh, be, yeah. like, precious sized? You know what I mean? That'd be fucked. Oh, no. Kal-El, of course, the the Nicolas Cage Kid. I mean, come on. That's kind of dope. It's kind of cool. That's kind of cool. Uh, yeah. Uh, let's see. Pilot Inspector. Child of Jason Lee and Beth Risegraf. Jason Lee's a crazy chose. Scientologist. Yeah. By the way, Scientologists love crazy names, too. They love naming their children crazy things. Uh, Rain. That's uh, Scott Disick. Which also is a terrible name, by the way. Disick <laughs> sounds like a dick that's sick. And Courtney mm-hmm. Kardashian, Bear Blaze, another one that has bear in it. Uh, bear shit. I don't know. North Saint in Chicago, children of Kanye West and Kim Kardashian, formerly Kim Kardashian West, well, soon to be formerly Kim Kardashian West. Um, Maddox and Shiloh, those aren't that weird. Destry. Steven Spielberg apparently has a kid named Destry. Or a Destry. But these names pale in comparison to some of the worst names ever. So let's get into the fucking uh, some of the fucking weirdest names that actually exist. So this is from a Reddit thread where people were asked to nominate some of the worst baby names they've come across. Okay. So this is Helzel. According to her, her mother liked Hazel, but her dad was a biker and loved Hell's Angels. So they came up with this mess. Hellzel. Um, Ermengarde. The parents were hippies, but still wanted to include uh, the mother's grandmother's name. I mean, it's got a cool name. Ermengarde. Sounds like something from Lord of the Rings. It does. Cypher. Rage. But not with the eye. Uh, they didn't spell it with the eye. That's the problem. Yeah. Some years ago, I ran into an ex-boyfriend at a gas station with his new girlfriend. A little boy in the back seat. His name was Rage. <laughs> <laughs> oh, how about this? I'm unique. Oh boy. Wow. You're, that's brutal. That's fucking brutal. I work at a bank in North Florida. I've been keeping a list of last names I come across. My favorite so far is definitely I'm unique. It was on her ID and everything. Uh, Kzile. I want to get to the fucking next one because this this list this has the worst fucking names imaginable. I think some of them are fake, but some of them are definitely Sam real. Sam Sung. Sam Sung. I mean, come on. Yep. The poor the guy's he, he's probably fucking Korean and shit. Well, I think he actually either either that's not his real name and he just uses it because he does tech stuff or he changed his name just for that. I mean, there's an uh, Apple logo though, so <laughs> Mr. Make any Perv sense. Mr. Perv's no. fifth grade class. Poor no. kid. <laughs> oh, man. Dude, I you can't. And look at him, too, you know? Poor bastard. It's me, Mr. Perv. Thanks, Mr. Perv. <laughs> uh, sad man. Sad man. <laughs> P.N.S. <laughs> Billy the Fridge's dad. Love it. Uh, Chris P. Bacon. That's probably a fucking... That's... Yeah, that's it, yeah. <laughs> Hitler Mussolini. Yeah. No way. Dick Long, 
Dick Long is not a bad name. That's no, a good name. No, dude, look at the smile on that kid's face. He's had a great like, high school my career. My name is accurate. <laughs> Paul Tucock. Whoa. Whoa. <laughs> <laughs> Hold on now. Drop your pants there, boy. <laughs> I bet you get that all the time, don't you? Oh, man. I know I got that name. I think we know how you got it. Mike Litteris. Okay, no that's way. a fake name. A fake name. <laughs> that the is dude no gave him a fake name to fuck it up. <laughs> that's, like uh, a, that's a prank phone call name. <laughs> oh, what's for your name? Mike, for Mike, last name Litteris. <laughs> My clitoris? <laughs> uh, Mrs. Wiener and Mrs. <laughs> Butt. <laughs> Dude, I wish I went to this school. Oh, God, the memes were dank at this school, I guarantee you, dude. <laughs> Did you need to speak to Mrs. Wiener or Mrs. Butt? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> is is Miss Butt available? Oh. Uh, cooking with food. No. That's the name of a book, but whatever. Mo oh. Lester. <laughs> In loving memory of my husband who slipped away from us August 11, 2008. <laughs> Goodbye, Mo Lester. Hopefully those kids slipped away too. <laughs> Major Dicky Head. Uh, <laughs> what? Dr. Farts. <laughs> <laughs> Dr. Wet Farts. Get out of here. <laughs> That's so fucking Come fake. on. <laughs> There's no way, dude. Jesus Condom. I don't know. <laughs> no no Photoshop. Yeah, be real. Photoshop, dude. <laughs> Jesus, no. doesn't even Bob match Bob. the shit around it. Doesn't even match the shit around it's it. Me, Jesus condom. Batman, <laughs> Ben, Superman. Batman, <laughs> Ben, Superman. <laughs> <laughs> That's fake, dude. Come on. Lord Brain. That's a cool That's name, me, Lord. I mean, I wish. Mrs. Ray. <laughs> Mrs. Ray. There's no way. Mr. Perv and gotta Mrs. be Rape. fake, dude. Mrs. Rape. Hold on, let me see if Rape, let me see if no Rape is actually way, dude. No Come fucking on, way. Mrs. Rape. Mrs. fucking Rape. What fucking what? No, there's no yeah, okay, way. Hold on. Hold on. There. It, this is a real last name. This is the a real surname, last name. Yeah, the surname Rape may come from the I Irish Raba. Uh, reap is pronounced rape and is sometimes spelt in that form. So it basically means reap. But it has an unfortunate spelling by modern standards. Mrs. Rape and Mr. Yep. Perv, dude, at the same fucking school. Yeah. With Mrs. Dick and Mrs. Butts. F you. You said those are your favorite letters, Paul. So, you know. Yep. Well, there he is. Now I've seen him. He plays a mean clarinet, I guess. You sure do. That is no way. Dr. Shit. Name shit. <laughs> Cash register. There you go. Bullshit. Donald Duck. Okay, I might believe that one. <laughs> I think I've I think I've actually heard about this before. Gay neighbors. Assistant to a, the registrar. That is a bad Photoshop, dude. That's a real fucking thing. So you see the fucking grease stain on the S? That's proof that it's real. Uh someone's added that in clearly. A taste of dick black. This is another guy with a jo obvious joke name. Uh, Chu Cock Long. <laughs> <laughs> That's probably not real, but I love it. Uh, Crystal Methvin. <laughs> Oof. No, dude. I don't Defendant believe Defendant on court TV there. Robert, probably pronounced Fajo, but, yeah. you know. Robert Fajo. Never been married. You don't say. Well, he could. They wouldn't. They wouldn't let him back then. You know. <laughs> no. 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 Doctor P. J. Hardick. <laughs> oh, what? Oh, well, you know how it is. No. What? Yes, I didn't. Start, I didn't start to see Doctor P. J. B. J. Hardick immediately. How about Dick Raper? Well, now that I know that Mrs. Rape actually had a class, this might be. This might be correct. This might be real. Lieutenant Les McBurney. Well, he's a firefighter. Okay. Les yeah. McBurney. Yeah. That's f J what? Jan Janice Kennedy. Some kind of fucking Kuhana, crazy Hawaiian Kuh word. Kuhana, Kuhai, Hula, Hai, Hiki, Hakala. Ho Fuck, dude. How do you even fucking say this fucking thing? I don't hey, know. Hana. I was going to try. Okay, go ahead. 
Yeah, try. Okay, Hanai Kukawa Kahihulihi Kahanuale. <laughs> Sounds good enough to me. Hey, you got it. Probably, maybe, probably not actually. Judge Willie Stroker. <laughs> <laughs> well, oh, I don't Willie like Stroker the... for Judge. Oh. <laughs> Willie <laughs> Stroker. McDonald Burger. Yeah, don't dude. hyphenate. If you... No. <laughs> no. If you no. If you I if burger, do not hyphenate that fucking I name. This... I hope this is fake, dude. I really it, do. It doesn't look like it. Lord Voldemort. No. No. Come on. Come on. Jack Daniels. That's a cool uh, name. That's, that's cool. believable. Christian guy. He he looks exactly right, too. Poor bland Christian guy. Tokyo sex whale. <laughs> <laughs> X Robin prisoner. Island prisoner. Okay. Dick Sweat. We remember Dick Sweat. Yeah, Dick Sweat. Anna L. <laughs> it's oh, me, man. Anna L. Don't. You can, you can, you know, I know that's the naming convention on those tags, but like, give her a fucking break, all right? An Guys, it says anal. Here's another crystal meth. This one looks more the part, I gotta say. It's crystal methany. Mr. Love, registered <laughs> sex offender. <laughs> Oh no! <laughs> it's Mr. Love, baby. <laughs> Crystal Ball. Yeah, we know Crystal Ball. Yeah, she's all on YouTube. Dude, is is is, is Kyle? You know what I mean? I don't know. I was I speculated about it. Everyone got mad at me, so I don't, I don't want to do it. Then. I didn't know. Yeah, I, got, I, dude, I didn't know. Yeah. Well, know. you know what? That's about all the time we got. But I hope oh, that you guys more, learned. What's that? One more, TJ. Dick Smalley, dude. Dick Smalley, dude. Look at him. Look at him. He's a brilliant man. I bet he was hung like a quarter horse, too. Dick Cock. I mean, that works. <laughs> <laughs> all right. That's all we have. Hope you guys realized that a rose by any other name would smell like a fucking piece of shit. Bye. Deep fat fried. Deep fat fried. Deep fat fried.